Eatsy's got a problem, a big one. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Eatsy has lots of problems. But today I want to focus on one that's quietly undermining the platform for sellers, buyers, and even Eatsy itself. It's something that's been spiraling for a while now, but in the past few years, it's reached a tipping point. It's impacting why so many shops are failing, why buyers are frustrated, and why, frankly, Eatsy's reputation is taking a hit. The problem? It's P. POD, print on demand, or more specifically the toxic version of POD that's luring people in with the promise of easy riches. And before you click off, let me be clear, I don't hate POD. In fact, I think when used properly, it can be an incredible tool for Eatsy sellers. But right now, the way it's being pushed and exploited is hurting everyone. And I want to show you why there may be better, more profitable ways to sell on Eatsy without falling into this trap of tracing this quick bucks dream. But first, let me ask you this. What's your take on print on demand? Do you love it? Hate it? Think it's a legitimate way to build a business? Or do you believe it doesn't belong on Etsy at all? Drop your thought in the co thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear your experience. Let me tell you a story. I was chatting with a friend the other day and they mentioned how people only seem to trust Etsy gurus who claim to make thousands of sales a week. And I get it. Social proof is powerful. Everyone wants to see numbers that back up the claims. But here's where it gets dangerous. Dangerous. We live in an age where the most attention grabbing content is what rises to the top. So, what do you get to see everywhere? Drama and get rich quick with Etsy content, promising massive sales, no effort required. And listen, I don't blame the creators. People click on what they want to see. And if you're making content, you need those views. But the more these claims are pushed, the more they start to shape how people view Etsy, like a gold mine for easy money. And the reality couldn't be further from the truth. So how much can you actually expect to make with print on demand? I ran some numbers in a past video and a spoiler alert, even if you are one of the top 1% at print on demand sellers, opening a shop in the past year, you're probably not making a living wage. Yep, you heard me. 99% of people starting POD shops this year are going to be massively disappointed with their earnings. The gap between expectations and reality is shocking. Don't just take my word for it. I came across a video by Shimmy Morris where he breaks down how much you can expect to earn selling your first 100 print-on-demand t-shirts on different platforms, including Eats I'm not going to spoil all of it, but the Etsy portion was eye-watering. Take a guess how much profit you think you'd make on your first 100 t-shirt sales. Your revenue would be $402 minus your expenses, which would be $75, totaling $327, just slightly less than selling on Amazon's Merch On Demand. Even though I knew it'd been low, seeing the numbers hit hard. After all the time spent researching design, setting up listings, running ads, and competing in that oversaturated market, you're left with about $327 after selling 100 shirts. So after all that work, you get barely enough to cover a month's rent in most places. And this is what's being sold as passive income. Yeah, not exactly. Now let's talk about physical products for a second. I decided to compare print-on-demand profits to handmade items because that's my thing. For example, let's look at the needle felted dogs, which is what I make. Break down the cost of materials and fees for selling a hundred of my smallest felted dogs. My total expense for those 100 dogs came in at about $200 and Etsy fees would add up to $475. That leaves me with, wait for it, $4,325 in profit. Yep, for 100 sales. And guess what? The handmade market is far less saturated. In fact, even if I only made 10 sales in the time it took a print-on-demand seller to hit 100, I'd still be making 100 bucks more in profit. Sure, I have to create each piece by hand, but for me, this is actually relaxing. I can do it when watching a show. It forces me to switch off and chill out rather than sit on the computer doing research and answering emails. And I also, I know my work stands out and brings joy in a way that copy-paste print-on-designs generally just don't. 
What about other physical products? Let's take watercolours as another example. Even with high quality material, the costs are minimal. Let's say $290 for the materials to make 100 paintings. Selling those at an average of $30 each because Etsy sellers do kind of under, undercharge a bit. After fees, you're left with a profit of $2,514. Oh, how about knitters? Knitters are really undervalued on Etsy and everywhere. But let's say you're knitting baby hats from acrylic wool, which costs about $4 per hat. If you sell 100 hats at $15 each, you're looking at a profit of around $957. That's still nearly three times the profit of a hundred print-on-demand t-shirts. So why do people keep jumping into print-on-demand? Well, it's easy to see why, right? There's this idea that it's quick and it's passive and you'll, it'll make you rich. But here's the truth. The only people getting rich are the ones selling courses on how to get rich. And Etsy itself, thanks to all those listing fees. And yes, Etsy is saturated, but not with quality handmade goods. It's flooded with low effort print on demand shops, all using the same designs, jumping from trend to trend, trying to get a slice of that imaginary pie. So what's the solution? We need to shift our focus back to quality, make items that are unique, that stand out, that people want to share and talk about. If you've got a hundred t-shirt designs that look the same as everyone else's, no one's going to care. You might get the sale, but it could just as easily go to someone else. But if you're crafting one of a kind items, people will love seeing the process. They'll tell their friends and they'll come back for more. When you create something original, your chance of going viral actually increases. Plus the competition is lower and things like ads become far more cost effective. So if you want to make it on Etsy, forget the get rich quick schemes, focus on your niche, make quality products and stop feeding the idea that Etsy is a passive income machine. It's not. But if you're willing to put in the work and create something truly special, you'll see real results. Please, let's stop flooding the market with 100 identical t-shirts. Support creators who are doing something different and stop falling for the easy money trap because it is hurting all of us.